all right so at this point i might as well finish the trilogy now i know in my past videos i've said board breakers aren't that great but i feel like at this point if i already made a hand trap tier list and a deck tier list for age of the overlords i might as well make a board breaker tier list as well so I'll, i'm gonna try my best to not yap as much but um just a disclaimer right i do think hand traps are better this format than board breakers but there are some board breakers worth mentioning so we'll talk about that as we go through them right so let's go ahead and just dive right into it right so number one we have santa claus terrible now the only reason why i think santa claus was even like considered good or like playable is because you can do things with purely and there are applications with happiness because you can able you're able to summon this card in defense position which was different from a kaiju uh, but that's not really relevant because that only works in purely and it's not even that great compared to the other board breakers next up raigeki raigeki is probably not that great at all it was only good because of Keshtira. And honestly, if you were to play a board breaker, I actually think Dark Hole is just better because it outs Ibli, which is like really important. So if you're even deciding to play Dark Hole or Regeki, I would probably play Dark Hole first, but overall, I think they both suck. Next up, Dark Ruler No More. So actually, funny enough, into this format, in the Age of the Overlords, I actually think this card's really good. The reason why I think it's really good is because I think next format, we're going to be dealing with a lot of IP boards, right? Because IP is able to make SP Little Knight, which is going to be a car, uh, defining uh, card of the format. I don't know if I said that right. But I think Dark Ruler actually works really well in a lot of different decks, right? It's very clean, very standard. I think every deck can just play Dark Ruler. And it handles the problem that every deck kind of faces right now is dealing with IP into Little Knight. So I actually think this card's really good. And I've tested it out myself. And uh, in terms of board breakers, right? Like I said, we are in a hand trap format, but this is one of the few board breakers that I actually think is honestly really good. And you can pretty much, or I'm considering myself of playing it too, right? So look out for Dark Ruler. I think this card's really good uh next up kaiju uh i don't think it's that great especially with a lot of the modern fields nowadays we're, we're ending on two monsters whether it's like sunlight wolf plus ip and rescue ace or it's um soul of rage plus dd king caesar uh, i think in both scenarios there's just multiple monsters now this is good against pearly but i do think there are some better cards over uh than kaijus that you can play that hit multiple matchups so it could be situational but i would say it's bad going to the new format because it really only hits purely and I don't think that's great at all. Next up, Emily match. I would say it's in situational. Now, I don't think this card is good at all next format. And uh, the reason why I even have it in situational is because if Rescue Ace players decide next format that they want to go IP Sunlight Wolf, which is a standard board that they do now, then Emily is really good. But there are been there are have been many combos that have been floating around. So obviously, Rescue Ace uh, wants to play around these like board breakers right like lightning storm or evenly match and the rescue ace boards have been either ending on the firewall or they've been playing jet synchron to summon barone uh so that makes this card uh, a little bit weaker i think and i really really do not think people are going to play rescue ace and just fold to a single evenly i don't think anyone's gonna build their deck that way uh so if you do play evenly i feel like people are just gonna be prepared for it but I put it in situational because if people do play that Sunlight Wolf IP combo, which I don't think is that great, then evenly does punish that board. So that's why I have here in situational. And you can grab it off Thrust if you play Thrust. It's another target that you can grab if you so choose, right? So you might as well play it there. Next up, Droplet. Now, Droplet actually is... It got better. This format, obviously, because of the Arise Heart ban. But I don't think the effect is as strong as, like, a Dark Ruler. It's literally a... It's better than Dark Ruler in one scenario, and then it stops Dweller. But I think in every other scenario, it's not that great. And I do think decks right now have a trouble of paying this card's costs. Uh, so maybe in like previous formats, you can play like a bunch of power spells and combine this with droplets. But like I said earlier, since we're in a hand trap format, hand traps and droplets kind of don't mix together because hand traps in itself make you already go minus. So the fact that you have to play another card on top, like droplets, will make you even go more minus. Um, and right now, I don't think top decks really have like a strong discard fodder. Uh, like, I don't think sending cards to graveyard is good in purely Unchain or a Rescue Ace. So, uh, I would say it's okay, but I definitely think it's a lot better. Let's say if you're playing like Tier Limit or something, because it can negate a Dweller. But at the same time, you have to pay a hefty cost because the cards you send uh, to Grave, like, they better be a Guido Kelbeck, because if they're anything else, it's probably not that much value. Um, but I, I think it's, um, it's okay, right? It's okay, but it's really dependent on the deck that you're playing next up karikura i would say this card's bad um the reason why it was good before is because of cashier now that it's gone uh hitting noir is just not that great after they've drawn a bunch of cards uh so i wouldn't say it's that great 
Next up, enemy controller. I actually think this card's pretty okay. Now, I know a lot of people might be thinking that I was kind of put it in the bad category, but I actually think this card is decent. Uh, simply because you can do a lot of things like playing into contain and extinguish, which are the cards that you set off of the rescue ace turbulence, right? The trap cards. And you can also use this card to take their turbulence or their sunlight wolf or their IP or whatever. And it kind of forces out interactions uh, immediately. Now, not being the best, but it does have some applications if your deck can, can do it, right? So I think it's okay in that situation. And then against other decks such as like Unchained, for example, if they use cards like Soul of Rage, then you can chain this card to take their DDD High King Caesar, and it kind of breaks out all their negates just from one card. But, and again, like I said, I still don't know how viable that strategy is because you are investing two cards. It's whatever card you're summoning plus the Econ. Uh, so it is a high investment, but I do see some potential. <laughs> so i would say this card is okay it's decent right next up hanger tops definitely have in situational now this card's a one of so it's not like a card that you can really like discuss discuss in depth because it's like it's at one so it's either you draw it or you don't uh, but the reason why i put it in situational is because i actually have a funny story with this card so like just try to just me trying to not yap a lot i'll, I'll try to keep it as short as possible but essentially on the last round of uh, ycs cancun which uh i topped uh it was game two and my opponent's going first as unchained and he ended up doing the full combo, right? Obviously with like tour guide, Aruha and everything, pretty much a standard full unchained combo. Nothing too like crazy, but I remember looking at my hand and it was like all the board breakers, right? It was like triple tactics thrust, uh, triple tactics talents, lightning storm evenly matched and like unicorn plus like um, more cards to play, right? It was a very beautiful hand, right? I was like, damn, his hand is really good. Um, I don't think I had evenly, I had another spell for sure, but that's really relevant, right? So after he finishes his full combo, he I draw for a turn and he flips anti-spell. And I'm like, wow, okay, I lost, right? Obviously, I'm looking at my hand. And then it took me a split second to actually realize that I, the card I drew for a turn was Pankratops. And uh, that's the only reason why I won. But um, would I say it's like good because it solved that one situation? Probably not, you know? And that's why I think it perfectly accurately describes the situation that I was in. It was good for that one situation. So it's definitely a situational card. Uh, but talking about one of is a little bit hard to talk about because, I mean, it's at one. So I guess if you have the space, if you have a 14 card side deck, I wouldn't hate throwing in the one Franker tops just to make it look kind of pretty, you know, make your make your uh, side deck have like exact 14 and then a card that's at one. I think Franker tops would be a good fit uh, for that situational type of uh, card. RP's Feather Duster, very good. I think you should just play this anyways. It's at one, it's a one of that you can just draw. It works well with other cards and it beats Rescue Ace, so might as well play it. Ultimate Slayer, I actually want to put Ultimate Slayer in very good. Uh, so Ultimate Slayer is one of those things that I think people are sleeping on. I actually think this card is very good against almost every single deck, actually. Every single deck right now we have uh, performs one of the uh, summoning mechanics, right? That's really huge. So such as like tier elements playing fusions that you can just shuffle back. Uh, outs uh, Graph of Fusion, outs Rukalos. A uh, bunch of strong monsters like that. And then against the Rescue Ace deck, uh, you can send uh, their Sunlight Wolf or their IP Masquerina, and they cannot chain it, right? So they can't make Little Knight, and you get to be, and you get to pop an extra card. So you actually clear their entire field off of one single card. And then people already know because um, this card got popular during Unchained format, which is currently this format. Uh, this card's still good against Unchained, right? So it's actually really good against a lot of decks and even the future decks as well. Uh, so this is a card to look out for, I think. I think this card is actually pretty good as a board breaker and something that I'm considering uh, myself i think people kind of forgot about this card uh, since unchained went down in popularity but hey it's really good against rescue ace so you might 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 try might want to try this card next up change of heart situational i think this card is just strictly worse like talents but i guess if you're playing uh, thrust you might as well play it um if you have the room because i mean if you have talents and you have change of heart then like or if you have thrust plus talents then at least you can thrust for something else that does a take effect and then you can use talents for something else right uh, so in that sense it's okay but uh, this card is just not good because it targets so it can just can be played around very easily like even uh the red dog Sh shavara i think that's what it's called plays around the change of heart so eh not that great next up super poly i think this card is good i actually think it will be pretty good in the next format now but the reason why I don't have it in very good and I have it in good is because I do think there's potential for people to play around it. But I think if people don't play around this card, it becomes really, really good. Uh, so one of the standard boards against Rescue Ace is actually uh, standard board that Rescue Ace makes is the Sunlight Wolf plus the Hydrant, which is the uh, level one uh, 
uh, fire, fire fire monster, right? And the reason why they summon the, the hydrant is because it makes their spell and trap effects like contain, extinguish, and and all those cards have bonus secondary effects, right? But the downside to that is now there's a there's two fires on the field, which is the sunlight wolf and is the hydrant. And if you super poly that, you're able to make mud dragon, and then mud dragon can call the effect to make everything a fire. And then nothing can be targeted and uh it's just super broken right because you not only out of the field but now they can no longer target any of your cards if you're playing like the mirror match for example and then obviously we all know super poly is extremely good against the tier limit decks i've been running around uh but the thing is like i said the, the rest of your ace deck has a lot of versatility to change up their board whether they end on the firewall monster or the baron board uh or things like that and i think if people are actively playing around it it'll make it a like a little bit worse but if the standard builds are um the the ip sunlight wolf plus the hydrant then i think the super poly is actually really really good so i have it in good because we don't know where the meta is headed at but that's how i feel about super poly right now next up my control is quite just a bad change of heart so probably don't play it dark hole cash to your card don't play it lava golem i think is okay i think if you're playing purely it could be good but even then i don't think it's that great but i can see the applications so if you're playing for example purely which doesn't rely on its normal summon which is probably the best case scenario of using this card you're able to hit like um ip plus sunlight wolf against rescue ace you're able to hit um uh, unchained soul of rage plus the eating wave king high caesar um but the reason why i don't think it's that great is because um uh against like the purely mirror match or even against tier limit it doesn't do enough and against purely they only end on one monster right literally just no war so yeah it's okay it's kind of dependent on the meta i wouldn't say it goes anything above here ever though but um definitely an okay card next up xyz encore i think it's i think it's still good uh as a side deck option because it's probably the best out going second to uh purely you just deny them of their draws uh completely and they can't chain yeep so i think it's always solid fear mode shit it's just a terrible uh lava golem to be honest it takes up your normal summon like lava golem does uh, and no deck is going to summon three monsters we're, yeah, we're having trouble trying to get decks to summon two monsters they're not going to summon three so this card's eh, not great talent i think it's just an overall solid card in the next format especially like i said earlier we are entering a hand trap format and whenever we do that talent is always a great option for that right uh and overall it's just a really good staple next up thrust i have it under talents because i do think thrust is significantly better if you are playing unchained uh, but if you don't have applications of setting cards right um instead of uh adding them to your hand which is what the unchained deck does because it can set the trap cards and you can actually use them if your deck doesn't really have anything good to set i don't think this card is that great because if a card can only be used uh going second to its full potential then it's probably not that great because going first with thrust like even if you get hand trap you're just setting an imperm and it's like okay who really cares right so i think this card would be in good next up fenrir i think fenrir isn't really a board breaker but it's just an engine i might as well just include it for the sake of the video fuck it I think it's good i think it's a decent card you can slap it in every deck uh, but the issue with this card i think is because it takes up space of non-engine like instead of playing fenrir you could be playing more hand traps and that seems to be like the thing that i've uh considered when playing fenrir because fenrir is a card that just takes up non-engine but it doesn't actually like do much for you right like i'd rather see two hand traps than one hand trap plus fenrir because fenrir typically if they full combo me it's really not gonna save me regardless um, so it's a card I've been uh, back and forth on, but as a whole, I think the card itself is a good card, so I have to give it in the uh, good category. Next up, Lightning Storm, just like uh, Harpies. The reason why Harpies is there is the same reason why Lightning Storm is there. Uh, so Lightning Storm, extremely powerful card, good against pretty much every single deck next format. Um, just a staple card that you can just side in against every matchup. So I think Lightning Storm is very, very solid. A Book of Moon, Kashira card. A Chalice, I think is a worse droplet. Now this card does out IP, but it's just too low impact man like if you're negating an ip if you're one for wanting an ip eh, it's probably not a good good look in uh next format or even modern Yu-Gi-Oh. like one for ones aren't that great unless they're like extremely high impact right next up book of eclipse cashier card let's throw it in the trash herald situational because if you're playing thrust i would say might as well play a herald because you can out nor um in the process and it just takes up a slot but if you're not playing thrust i just wouldn't play this card at all Next up, Cosmic, I would say situational. It's pretty good against Unchained, and that's kind of about it. Uh, but obviously, if you have Cosmic right now into the Rescue Ace format that we're going into, it just doesn't do enough, right? That's why we have Lightning Storm and Harpies. Like uh, this card actually are blowouts versus like um if they set four cards in you, you have a cosmic, uh, eh, it ain't it ain't getting you, it ain't getting you that far. So 
not that great next up i don't know why we have a hand trap here um i'm a believer that imperm is a hand trap not a board breaker and i've already done this in the hand trap tier list so go check that out if you want to know where that belongs but i'm not going to rank this next up marionette might situational it's only good against unchained i would not honestly i wouldn't even play it in going forward because there's no way we can take up cards in our side deck that's only good against one matchup that's just crazy there's like 15 different decks and i'm not gonna use my side deck for one matchup that sounds crazy uh up next we have a repeat so i'll skip that and then next up twin twister situational depends if your deck can play it or not but overall play cosmic before that and i even and i wouldn't even play cosmic so like twin is even like lower on the list after that uh so if you're thinking of playing back removal next format just stick with lightning storm and harpies they're definitely just the best ones uh for sure that'll be it for this tier list guys let me know what you guys think in the comments below do you think uh board breakers are great next format i don't think so but maybe you guys think so and what do you guys think about this list and if there's something that i'm missing let me know uh, down in the comments below and if there's something that you want to rank higher also comment that as well because i might be missing some applications right like maybe you guys uh, have figured something out that i haven't with these board breakers and i would like to know that as well so i'll see y'all in the next one